Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my classroom right here. We're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. I have to make this video. I like making uh, a video on intermittent fasting at least once every three months or so, because not only is it helping me, it can also help out a lot of people maintain and sustain a certain daily calorie requirement. You have to consume a certain amount of calories per day in order for you to lose some weight. If you're just consuming the same amount of calories that you usually need just to sustain your metabolism and your workout, your daily movements, your physical activities, you're just going to be maintaining. The body has no reason to use up any um, ketones, any body fat, and burn any body fat, extra body fat in order for you to continually transform the body so with that said welcome welcome to this video here if you're brand new here my name is manny i'm a certified personal trainer creator owner and lead instructor of manny's fitness program i created my program in 2009 and we usually just concentrate on weight loss muscle building and overall better health and performance but we also go into the training side the consistency side, the accountability side, the motivation side and all that, because there's a lot that we all need together in order for us to stay in great shape. A lot of us can train individually. A, a lot of us can train together. But at the end of the day, we all need some kind of reminders, some kind of consistency, accountability, and also some kind of structure, right? But uh, let's not get into that. Today, we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting. So if you're new here, again, my name is Manny. Make sure you subscribe and also hit that notification button. That way you don't miss none of my future videos. I know it's been a while. I, we've been super busy here in the program. So forgive me if I'm not consistent with my videos like I have mentioned before. I'm going to try to maintain my consistency here on the YouTube channel. I've been doing so for... Uh, quite a while now. I don't know if you know this, but I created my YouTube channel a long time ago and I wasn't really too consistent with it. I wasn't really uploading. I wasn't really into the whole, um, just the whole editing and, and putting the videos together. But now it's a whole different story. We have a lot of reaction videos. We have some vlogs. We have the first we beast, then we feast videos so on and so on informative videos like this one so make sure you hang in there and if you've been with me since day one you are outstanding let me know in the comment section down below how you're doing and i'll get to it to you as soon as possible as fast as humanly possible but other than that let's get into it intermittent fasting right intermittent fasting is one of the main tools that i consistently use not only myself my wife does it my kids do it and it keeps us on check. It keeps us uh, preventing from us uh, breaking our fast. As once you break your fast, that's why it's called break fast, break fast, breakfast. When it comes down to breakfast, a lot of people have the mentality to where you need to eat something first thing in the morning. And that's been an error since day one. It doesn't you don't have to eat something in order for you to perform that day you might already have a lot of storages going on your body does store ketones and glucose and glycogen and stuff like that in order for you to perform throughout the day so don't worry about that if you're not eating uh first thing in the morning unless you were fasting the night before like you know for quite a while the the day before and you don't have any storages, your storages are depleted, then of course, you know, get something in your body unless you're doing some kind of religious fasting or anything like that, then you usually go a long period of time. There's been people that have done the water fasting and stuff like that. And I haven't really researched it, haven't really asked too many questions uh, within that environment there. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much. Is it beneficial? I'm pretty sure the whole fasting aspect understanding is very beneficial practicing applying it is very beneficial okay so we're gonna go through those benefits but there's one main reason why i always recommend it here my program to practice it especially when it comes down to weight loss when it comes down to weight loss intermittent fasting 
if intermittent fasting strictly for weight loss. Usually just strictly for weight loss. And when it comes down to maintaining or bulking, then that's a whole different ball game. You can still do intermittent fasting if you're bulking and or maintaining. You can still do it. It can become a lifestyle. A lot of people perform better throughout the morning without in an empty stomach, without eating in anything. And that's myself. I usually work out in the morning around 10 10 a.m. to around 12 p.m. And if I have something in my stomach, if I eat something before my workout or anything like that, or even a couple of hours before my workout, it feels totally different compared to before when I used to do it like that, like the, the traditional way to where you eat something first thing in the morning or you eat, you know, two hours before your workout just to have some kind of an energy source. It's not about that. Like I said, you have storages. Okay. So it's not like, if you don't eat, you, you're not going to be able to perform because you don't have any any energy source. No, you have storages, okay? So weight loss is going to be the main reason for me to, uh, to recommend intermittent fasting. Why? Because of a deficit. Calorie deficit. calorie deficit. That's going to be one of the main reasons why I recommend intermittent fasting is to maintain a calorie deficit. When it comes down to calorie deficit, all that means is you're consuming a little bit less calories than what you burn throughout the day with your metabolism and your workout or your physical activity, whatever it is. You kind of start knowing where your daily calorie requirement is as you continue in your fitness um journey but one way to to know how, how many calories you're supposed to be consuming is uh getting your overall weight and times in it by around 10 and this is a give or take there we use a a website we use a a calorie daily calorie intake calorie calculator and it'll give us somewhat of a more precise number but you can always times it by 10. That gives you 1,850 calories per day, you know, and that's that's at a deficit. Okay, That's at a deficit. To maintain, you, you might have to times this one by like 12 or 14 for maintenance. Okay. But if you want to do a, a deficit, times 10. Again, make sure you understand and find out exactly where your deficit is at, everybody's different. You might be an ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph, or, or something like that. So you might be burning more calories than others, just depending on your genes, uh, your genetics. It depends on your physical ability and or just overall workout regimen. You might be working out a little bit harder than the norm or stuff like that. So as for me, the beauty of this, of, of me recommending this, this tool here is because I know my members, I know what they do. I know their workouts. I know everything that they're doing. Not only that, but when we do an assessment, a weight loss or goals assessment, then we get to talk about any extra physical activities that they usually do on their own. Besides being here in the program, the three days out of the week, the whole workout, full body workouts, they sometimes go hiking, biking, some kind of sport and or do a little bit of an uh, an extra workout somewhere else. So yes, it depends on your overall workout regimen. So be sure that you're not too too low on your calories. That way uh, you end up depleting your, your glycogen. And if you deplete it way too much, the body starts breaking down muscle fiber tissue. It starts breaking down any, any proteins for fuel and Instead of using it to rebuild the muscles, ligaments, tendons, uh, and or healing and stuff like that, then you're not going to have that. You're not going to have that macronutrient in order for you to recover, repair, heal, restore, um, 
and all that. So make sure you're not too low on your calorie deficit. All right. So intermittent fasting. Let's go. Let's go into the intermittent fasting area. When it comes down to intermittent fasting, the norm is going to be the 18, 18, 6. Okay, 18, 6 is going to be the norm. My my phone is over there. Don't mind my phone right now. Hopefully you guys can hear it. All right. So intermittent fasting, 18, 6. 18, 6 is the norm. Boom. Oh, you guys can't see that. You guys can't see that. Hold up. A little too high. I got you. I got you. 18, 6. I'll go ahead and put it right here. Okay, so 18.6 right there. Notice that I put an F under the 18 and an EW under the 6. This is going to be your fasting. You're going to be fasting for 18 hours, and you're going to be having your eating window for 6 hours. Okay, so let's say your first meal starts at 2 p.m. Or let's say that's a little late. Oh, we'll do 2 p.m. 2 p.m. And your last meal should be around 8 p.m. That is the 18.6 right there. Okay, that's usually the norm. The norm to start the intermittent fasting, 18.6. And usually, depending, if, if you don't, if you go to bed around 8 p.m., then of course you want to have your last meal maybe an hour and a half to two hours before you go to bed. So if you go to bed way earlier, then I usually go to bed around 10, 10 p.m. So uh, my my last meal, is it's around 8 p.m. So this will work perfectly for me. And I do have, this is what I practice myself. I usually have my first meal around 2 p.m. And then I have my uh, protein shake in the middle of that. And then my last meal at 8 p.m. It works perfectly. I consume the right amount of calories to stay on a calorie deficit. It fills me up and I'm not always craving. You know, the reason why a lot of people usually crave, let's see if you guys can see, you guys can see everything, right? The, the reason why a lot of people crave is because we're so used to snacking. We're so, so used to snacking and feeding the stomach, you know, throughout the day. So once you start, stop feeding it, then it starts to crave. It's, it, it becomes a habit uh, for the stomach. Not only that, but water intake, right? Water intake is going to be a big deal. So let's talk about that. Let's go into the next uh, section of this, which is the what, what can you have during your fasting period? Okay, what, what can you have? All right, fasting. So you're fasting for 18, fasting for 18 hours. You'll be fasting from 8 p.m. to 2 p.m. Okay, so 8 p.m. You'll be fasting from 8 p.m. all the way to 2 p.m. That's 16 hours right there. Okay, 16 hours. 8 p.m. to 2 p.m. I hope you guys can still see that right here. Let's see. So, yeah, 8, 8 p.m to 2 p.m. Perfect. All right, so that's your fasting right there, okay, fasting. All the way till 2. So what do you have during that time? Uh, you're going to be in bed from 8, let's say 8 to, um, well, let's say 10 uh, till like around, let's say 8, 8 a.m. in the morning, right? So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, so 6 hours. Let's say you have those 6 hours uh, from 8 a.m. all the way to 2 p.m., what are you gonna what can you have black coffee okay black coffee green tea or water okay black coffee green tea or water a lot of people are always asking oh what about this what about that can I add this sugar free or you know what are those packages called for the coffee I drink my coffee black I make it simple I tend to not risk breaking the fast because like I said the reason a lot of people start to crave or start to get way too hungry is because they break their fast and that's it. 
it's it's like a a, a flood okay a flood as soon as you open up the 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 flood it's gonna be hard to stop it so make sure you don't break it by consuming something that's gonna break your fast around 25 to 50 calories and some kind of food item is is will break your fast so don't risk it um so water green tea black coffee okay water green tea black coffee will be the liquids that you're able to consume in order for you to not break your fast and you know if i think about it you might you might even be able to consume maybe like some lettuce or something like that lettuce i know there's some vegetables with a good amount of calories lettuce is very low in calories very, very low in calories and it's mostly water so you might not be breaking the fast with that but why risk it like i said stick to a program that's easy to follow not too complicated black coffee green tea and water and then uh have your first meal at 2 p.m uh all the way through through 8 p.m now you don't want to consume everything right at 2 p.m right because you still have three meals depending uh how many calories you have throughout the day make sure you separate them properly start practicing certain regimens that you're able to to maintain like let's say if you have your your last meal from your calories at um let's say 4 p.m you still have all four hours of an eating window that you have to maintain and if you don't have something to eat then that means you're going to be fasting from 4 p.m all the way to 2 p.m so that makes it uh, a, a bigger fasting um regiment so here we go now if 18.6 is way too difficult you can always lower it down you can always lower it down maybe you can be fasting for uh, 16 hours only and then you have an eating window of eight hours okay just make sure that you um you you fraction them out correctly so if you're doing 16 hours of fasting then you just go ahead and increase this one by uh, two hours so 16 8 if that's still too difficult then lower it down again 14 hours and then uh, your 10 hour eating window, which is almost the, 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 the traditional breakfast, um, intermittent fasting to where your first meal is like around 8 AM. And then your last meal is around, is around six to 8 PM. So that puts you at a like 12 hour eating window, which it doesn't really make a difference. And what you want to do, what the re the main reason you want to do intermittent fasting is just to give your stomach a break all right you'll be at an empty stomach the body the the stomach takes a break it heals uh it it, it filters okay it filters and you don't consume all your food all at once that way you have more food you close up your eating window and your whatever food requirement with the deficit you have is going to provide to you it is going to provide to you more food instead of eating all that food throughout the day you'll be you'll be finishing all your food uh faster and you'll be hungry or this and that that way the body doesn't start digesting till 2 p.m so there it is right there ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna leave the video right here on intermittent fasting i hope you guys like these videos 18.6 will be the norm if it's too hard then make sure you lower it down to 16.8 and if this is too still too easy, there's some people that do 20 and 4, okay? 20-hour fasting and 4-hour eating window. Whatever works for you, or however you feel, make sure you feel for it. Don't start too, too big. Start at the lowest one if necessary, and then gradually move up to the 18.6. So other than that, I'm going to leave the video right there. I hope you guys like these videos. If you guys like these videos, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, Make sure you subscribe. If that subscribe button is still red, hit it. Hit that notification button, and I'll see you on the next video. You guys take care. Be safe. Be nice with each other. Always and forever. Mind, body, and strive. Bye-bye.